Well, happy Father's Day to all you fathers. And uh, kind of before we get into the main message, I got a little something else I want to say. I just want to uh, read to you a psalm, Psalms 127, 3 through 5. It's not, uh, Kathleen doesn't have this. That's okay, just listen. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. I want you to know that you, you can't have a father's day without a father, and you can't be a father unless you have a child, okay? All right? Now, there's some of us that are fathers naturally. I am not one. There's some of us who are fathers spiritually. There's some of us who are fathers in both ways, naturally and spiritually. But what the Bible says is children are a gift from God. They are a reward from him. Children are born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. Now, some people think that children are a curse, okay? Some people uh, think that there's such a curse that we have a, a prevalent problem in this country with abortion. People say, I don't want that child. But God's word says that children are a gift. That's what God's word says. The scripture goes on to further to say children are a reward. They're a reward. They're not a punishment. They're a reward. Though sometimes people think they're a punishment, they're actually a reward, okay? The scripture uh, uh, tells us that they're a reward and they are like arrows in a, children, in, a, in a warrior's hand. They're not like thorns in a person's side. They're like arrows in a warrior's hand, okay? This is why it's so important for us to sow into children's lives, to sow into the children the word of God, the wisdom of the scriptures as they mature so that they will produce good fruit, godly fruit. Proverbs 22.6 says this, Train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart. Now, I'm going to take a guess and say that the most recent father in this room, the most recent father is probably Scott Daniel Newman right there. Right? All right. And, and uh, I don't know how many people this is a surprise to. He says it's a surprise to some. But Scott Daniel Newman has decided today that this is a good day as a good father to dedicate his child. Amen. One up, Scott, Jermaine, Jermaine and Scott. And uh, Scott, bring up whoever you would like. Jermaine and Scott, come on up. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, every good gift comes from God. That's a good gift, okay? Uh We'll just meet you down here. Every good gift comes from God. And there, there's the little package right there. The gift from God. Scott and Jermaine. Now, Jermaine, Jermaine uh, uh, went through a lot of labor to get this gift to come to us today. And here he is. And his name is Quinn. Her. Her, her name is Quinn. Excuse me. Excuse me. I know. I messed up in my head. Then her name is Quinn. And Quinn is uh, um, how many? How old now? Three months old. Three months old is Quinn. Quinn, she's such a good baby. She's not crying or anything. You know, we always say that if babies don't cry, they're good. <laughs> but Quinn is so cute and so wonderful. But the thing is, is, you see, God gives the gift. God gives the gift. But you know what God does? He gives us a test after he gives us a gift. He says, now that I've given you a gift, are you willing to give it back? Are you willing to trust me? That's what godly parents do. They understand this is a gift from God, but today, Scott... And Jermaine want to dedicate Quinn, their gift, back to God and say, God, we trust you with our baby. We trust you with the life that we uh, uh, have been given uh, the, the supervision over. We trust you, Father, that you're going to help us to be good parents. Now, it's Father's Day. Scott's a father. And uh, on Mother's Day, um, we, 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 didn't have this particular, <laughs> we didn't have this particular advantage, but... Today, we have the mom, we have the dad, and they have decided to bring up their child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They've decided to bring up this child in a way that was right before the sight of God, in the sight of God. They've decided to teach little Quinn what it's like to serve God, what it's like to know who the Father is, the real heavenly Father of us all. And so today, they want to dedicate this baby. And you know, uh, we are going to, uh, we don't, here's what we don't do, is we don't, um, Christian babies in this church in the sense of we don't say, uh, we don't do infant baptism, because that's a whole different thing. The Bible tells us that if you believe and are baptized, all right, 
Well, Baby Quinn hasn't had the chance yet to make that decision. But with the help of Baby Quinn's parents, with the guidance of her parents, when she comes of that age to recognize her need for a Savior, Baby Quinn will be fully equipped because the Word of God will then put in her to make that decision. You know, I wasn't brought up that way. I wasn't brought up with any knowledge about Jesus, really, except that he hung on a cross. But this baby's going to have the advantage of being brought up by godly parents. And you know what? That is an advantage to this baby. That's a blessing to this baby. But I want to tell you, that's a great responsibility to these parents, a great responsibility. So not only are we going to pray and dedicate the baby to, to, to God to say, Father, this baby, we're dedicating this baby's life to you, that this baby's life will be fruitful in the kingdom of God, that this baby will produce good fruit, that this baby will serve you, but also we're dedicating the parents and their service. We want to spell, pray a special prayer over these parents. We're not, and, and, and so today I want, to ask, uh, I want to ask, Joanna, could you come up here? I know. I have a microphone here for you. Is Baby Quinn, we want to uh, dedicate Baby Quinn to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want, to know, I want you to know this. is not only is this a family right here. This is a family. There's Grandma. There's Mom. There's Dad. There's Auntie. Auntie Nucci. <laughs> not only, but I want you to know is they could feel. They could feel, but they're not going to feel. They could feel. Well, it's up to us to train up this child in the way that's right. It's up to us to raise this child in a godly way. But I want you to know, we are family. And we are going to dedicate ourselves. We're going to pledge ourselves to do everything in our power to help this young lady grow up and be a woman of God. So I'm going to ask Joanna if she would pray a special prayer of dedication over baby Quinn today. And... Uh, if she doesn't get choked up. But I know, I just know she has the heart for it. I know she has the heart for it. The Lord just let me know she has the heart for this. And we want to just all, as she prays, we want to be in agreement. And we want to just bless this family and bless this baby. And then we want to bless these parents, all right? So could you pray? Absolutely. All right, pray nice and loud. Heavenly Father, we just delight in your gifts. Yes. And this baby, Quinn, is one of the dearest gifts that we've ever seen and ever had the privilege to know. And we just thank you for her today. Yes. We thank you for this family that wants to do the yes. right thing. Thank you, we Father. thank you for this family that knows you thank and you, loves Father. you and wants to have baby Quinn know yes. and love you. Yes. And we just thank you for this precious, precious heart you, that you put in the midst of us. Yes. And we just ask that every person here feel the responsibility of helping this child yes. grow. Yes. To know you and to dedicate yes. her life to you. Yes. That she will be a mighty woman of God. Yes, yes. And that she will know you so well. Yes, Lord. That your words will be live in her. Yes. And that you will, she will always walk with you all the days of her life. Yes. And we thank you in your precious son's name, Jesus. Thank, thank you, you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Father. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And now let's pray together for this family. Let's pray for these parents because they have a great responsibility ahead of them. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you that baby Quinn has parents that trust in you, that put their faith in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that baby Quinn has an advantage over a lot of babies in this world because her parents will lead her up in the way that is right so that when she's old, she shall not depart therefrom. And Lord Jesus, right now, we just say, Lord Jesus, give these parents every bit of wisdom they need by your Holy Spirit. Give them all the courage that they need by the Holy Spirit. Give them all the energy, the love, the power, and everything they need to give this baby every single advantage as she grows up, to show her that she is loved, to show her that she is loved by her parents, she is loved by her family, she is loved by her God. Lord Jesus, we just dedicate uh, the lives of this, the, the members of this family, the child and the parents, to you, Lord. And Lord, we give a pledge, Lord, that we shall support them in prayer, Lord. We shall support them in love, Lord Jesus. We shall support them where they need the support, Lord Jesus. Whatever the case, Lord, when they need us, we shall be a family to this family, Lord. We shall be a support to this family, Lord. We shall lift them up in prayer, Lord Jesus. Lord, even as you give them, uh, as parents, this great responsibility of raising a child, Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're going to give us uh, um, um, the, the, the knowledge, the wisdom on how to help them to do that job, Lord. 
the support in how to do that job, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that they have given their lives to you, Lord, and it is their desire that their child someday make that same decision, Lord. And we say, Lord Jesus, so let it be. So let it be in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that these godly parents have dedicated themselves to this great responsibility, Lord. And we say, Lord, we thank you for them, and we thank you for this family. We thank you for this baby, Lord. And we just dedicate every single person in this family into your hands, and we put them into your trust, Lord Jesus, knowing that you shall preserve them. You shall take them through every good time and every bad time, Lord Jesus. Every sickness and every bit of health, Lord Jesus, you shall be with them. You shall provide for them. You shall encourage them, and you shall bring them that thing that they need, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for them right now. We give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right. All right. Joanna's just all broken up, but I knew she was the one. I knew she was the one. She's very honored. Yes, she's very honored. And we are honored that... Uh, that you too have brought your babe to this church for that purpose. Amen. Amen. All right, so the title of the message this morning is Our Father. Our Father. Everyone on this earth has had or currently has a father. And yet, some have been raised in a situation that was somewhat fatherless. Okay? There are two types of fathers that we need to discuss here. There are those who are fathers after the flesh... We could say biologically they're fathers. And then there are those, there are those who are, are fathered by relationship. Okay? Because not all fathers are biological fathers. Some people have been a father to you perhaps and you were perhaps an orphan. Maybe your parents had died or something. Or maybe you were in a household where it was a, um, your mother married another person. And that person came in and took on the role of the father. Not all fathers are biological fathers. But there are lots of men who have taken on the role as a father. And the father role is a relationship role. It's a relationship. You can't have a father without a child. You can't have a child without a father. It's a relationship between the father and the child. Some, as I said, are biological. Now, I saw something. This is not my joke. I thought it was pretty funny, though. Somebody said, today is a day that we celebrate real men who have been fathers. Not those, not those other guys, you know, not those other guys who haven't been good fathers. We celebrate them on April Fool's Day. <laughs> anyway, but we want to be thankful. There have been fathers in our lives that are people, that are men, that God has raised up to be mentors to us, to be leaders to us, to be teachers to us. And they're not always your biological father. But if they are, you're a very blessed person. You're a very blessed person. Not everybody has had that great advantage. Now, the fatherless household is enormously more prevalent in our society today than the motherless household. And God created the family to include the influence of both the mother and the father. The importance of the father in the household uh, is more uh, often obvious when we talk about young men, when we talk about boys. We can see that the role of the father is an important role for that son, for that child to know what it's like to be a man, what a ma how a man should act, how a man should behave. Without the role of an adult man in the family, it can be difficult for boys to find their way. As they try to understand their proper role as, as, as men in society, as men in marriage. What is often overlooked is the equal importance of the influence of a father on the female child. Without a role model in the household of what a good man should be, often young girls are uncertain about what attributes to look for in a mate. You need to have that role model. Of a good man. Mothers and fathers are both important for the proper emotional development of children. This is Father's Day. A little while back we celebrated Mother's Day. Which, uh, uh, which would you say was the more important of the two days? They're equal. Now I know probably you won't say out loud that there's a difference, but uh, many of us have a secret leaning towards mothers being more important than fathers. We really do. It just kind of built into us, I'd say. It's some part of our society. God knows that mothers are important. They are extremely important. But what is more important in God's eyes? That's the important thing to look at. What do you suppose is more important in God's eyes when determining the value uh, uh, of a man versus a woman? Is a man more important than a woman or is a woman more important than a man 
In God's eyes, they are of equal importance. In God's eyes, fathers and mothers are of equal importance. The thing that needs to be understood is though they are of equal importance, they have different roles. Different roles. What's more important when building a house, a hammer or a nail? You need both. Try to drive a nail without a hammer. Try to just hammer on wood with no nails. You're not going to build a house. What's more important when it comes to reproduction, a man or a woman? It's kind of hard to do the one without the other, isn't it? God gave each one a different role, but the two were intended to be together, and both have their obvious importance. I realize that I'm speaking now to a group of people that undoubtedly includes individuals who did not have a father present in their upbringing. Or they had a father that was a poor example of what a good father was supposed to be, perhaps. This is Father's Day. It's not called Men's Day. It's Father's Day. This is not the day where we celebrate males in society. This is not even a day where we celebrate males that have been involved in procreation. This is a day where we celebrate the men in our lives who have been fathers to us. Whether they are related by blood or not. For some of us, the men who have nurtured us, guided us, protected us, and supported us may have been a teacher, may have been a pastor, may have been an uncle, may have been a family friend, may have been a coach, may have been a counselor, but regardless of who they were, they showed us that they cared for us. They cared for how we would develop. They cared about our lives. They cared about the direction we were going. They cared about where we were going to end up. They gave of themselves to better our lives. A family is not necessarily made up of those from the same gene pool. But sometimes a family is made up of those who simply have been there for us. You may not have had a father figure in your biologic family. But if you're in God's family, you now have many relatives from many different bloodlines. And it's very possible that you are surrounded by people who are fathers to many people. Psalms 68, 4 through 6 says this. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, or Yah, and rejoice before him, a father of the fatherless. God is a father of the fatherless, and a judge of the widows is God in the holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. There are those who don't even know who their parents are, but if you are in God's family, he will set you amongst people who care for you, people who love for you, people who will be a father and a mother to you. So he sets the solitary families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious, dry to dry, uh, the rebellious dwell in a dry land. If you have a godly father, that man was a gift of God for you. And today is a day to thank God for that gift. Thank God for the gift if you had a godly father. If you did not have a godly father, then God has placed you in a family, a family of believers, and God himself is the father to the fatherless, so that we no longer will be called fatherless. We're not fatherless, none of us who believe in Jesus, none of us who have God in our heart, none of us are fatherless. God set the solitary, that means the orphans in families. That means that everyone who has no one who they know of as being that person in the role of a father in the physical form, we all have a heavenly father. We all have someone who does look out for us. We all have someone who does care for us. We all have, to have someone who is, uh, has plans for our lives that are for good. The family that you now have in God is a family of many brothers and many sisters and a family where God himself is our father. He's our father. He's not just my father. He's your father. He's our father. Father. Every man is called to be an example to younger men that's in this house. When you're in the household of God, you are called to be an example to younger men, whether you're a father in the natural or not. Titus 6 6 says this Similarly, encourage the young men to be self controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good in your teaching. Show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. It says, encourage the young men amongst you and be examples to them. Every man in here must be an example to the younger. We must all take up that role. When you see the 
the, the young man who doesn't have a father or the young man who doesn't have a godly father. It is our responsibility to take up the role of being a, father -like, a father-like person, to that, person to that young man and to raising that kid up and to showing him the love of God and showing him the word of God, showing him the reality of who Jesus Christ is because we are responsible to be an example. Every man is responsible to be an example. Every mature man is to be an example to younger men. All of us men are called to be a father to the one who has no father. There should never be somebody in our midst, a young man, who doesn't have someone in his life, from amongst us at least, who can show him what it's like to be a man of God. When a young man looks to one of us as a model of what being a man of God is all about, we have to be ready to be a father to that young man. When any young woman is looking to see what a godly man looks like, the kind of man that would make a good husband, that would make a good father for our children. It is up to us men to model what a good man looks like by living a godly life. A good father is a man that walks in a lifestyle that is consistent with the character of his heavenly father. If you had a good father, today is a good day to thank God for that gift. Thank God for that gift. If you currently have a good father... If your father's still on this earth, he's still alive, today is a good day to thank that man personally for being a man that was used in your life to show you what the love of the father was all about. If you have had, or if you have now have a man in your life who treated you like a son or a daughter, who showed you care or support or provision or protection, who showed you the selfless love of Christ even if he wasn't your natural father, then that man has been a father to you. And you need to thank that man today. Or you need to thank God for that man today. Because there are fathers to the fatherless. And God calls all men to be that. All men in this church should be a father to the fatherless. When we find somebody, I'll tell you, I, that I, have, uh, I don't have any natural children, obviously. Okay? I have lots of spiritual children. And I find I go out and I've uh, just this, within the last two weeks, I, I have uh, met, uh, there were four young men that I've met that um, I brought into the born-again experience. These are young men. These men, you could see, they didn't have the father image in their life. They didn't have somebody to guide them. They didn't have had to step into that role, though I'm not a natural father. And hey, a young man, there is a heavenly father, and he wants to be your father. And he wants you to be his son. And he wants to come into your life. And I had to be the one who took the place, a surrogate father, so to speak, to say, let me show you the way. All of us are called to be that person for somebody. Whether it's your natural children or whether it's the children that you've just adopted into your, into, your, into your life. We need to be examples of what a father is. Of one who loves the, the, those that are fatherless. Of one who loves our own children in such a way that the most important thing to us as men is that they get an example in their life of, from us of what it's like to be godlike, what it's like to be a man of God, what it's like to be a man who has integrity, what it's like to be a man who is spiritual, not what it's like just to be male, okay? But a man of God. That's what we need to be. A good father is a model to us of our heavenly father. In the Old Testament, we can search through the numerous genealogies looking for the names of fathers. It says, so-and-so who was the son of so-and-so, who was the son of so-and-so, who was the son of so-and-so. And we can do that for every single biblical character. You can find out the father, who the father was, every character in the Bible. We can see that the children of Israel all, all often called themselves the children of Abraham, saying, Abraham is our father. And in all of those genealogies, there is one genealogy that stands out as different than all the rest. I'm going to read you a little genealogy. Here's one that stands out different. Luke 3, 34 through 38. The son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah. It's going through a little genealogy. The son of Nahor, the son of Serog, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah. It's going backwards in time. The son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxed. The son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, you've heard of him? The son of Enoch, you've heard of him? The son of Jared, the son of Mahel, Mahalel, the son of Kenan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, and we go back to the very beginning, the son of Adam, the son of God. You know, in those Old Testament geologies, Adam's the only one who can say, I'm God's son. The rest say, well, I'm the son of Seth, I'm the son of Enoch, I'm the son of Abraham. They didn't claim, I'm the son of God back then. 
Okay? They put, in fact, when the children of Israel finally, uh, you know, became a people, they said, we are the sons of Abraham. We're the daughters of Abraham. But Adam was called, and he could say, legitimately, I'm the son of God. Everyone else was the son of someone else. But all of that changed when the only begotten entered into the picture. When Jesus arrived, Jesus Christ claimed to be the son of God. And because of this, the Jews sought to stone him and sought to, to, to kill him for blasphemy. He certainly could have claimed that he was the son of Joseph, and they wouldn't have had a problem with that. He could have said he was the son of Abraham because he was a Jew. They wouldn't have had a problem with that. But to say that God was his father was something that simply wasn't done. People didn't say, I'm the son of God back then. Because to say you were the son of God was blasphemy. We can all agree that Jesus had every right to call God his father because we know who he was and who he is. But then Jesus did something that was absolutely radical, something that shook the very foundations of people's religion. Something that no mortal had the right to say, or at least we didn't believe we have the right to say. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he says, you guys, I want to fill you in on how to do this. Let me show you how to pray. He said, start like this. Matthew 6, 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Did you catch that? Jesus told mortal men to address God as their father. Everything changed. He didn't say pray to Abraham. He didn't say claim Abraham as your father. He says, you realize that I'm the father. And I want to tell you something else. You're God's children too. You're in God's family too. You can call God father as well. Jesus told mortal men to address the Almighty God as their Father. That shook some people up. You're calling God your Father? How presumptuous. Who do you think you are? Well, I'll tell you who we think we are. We're the children of God. That's who we are. Jesus included everyone in that family. He said, our Father. He didn't say, talk to my Father. He said, it's our Father. Our Father. If you're in God's family, you are a son or a daughter of the living God, and you have the right to call God your Father. If you're a man, then you can make the same declaration that Christ made. You can say, I am a son of God. If you're a woman, you can say, I am a daughter of God. Hebrews 2.11 says this, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. We're all in the same family, and that means we have the same father, and our father is God. Now, if you're a brother or a sister to the Son of God, what does that make you? That makes you a son or a daughter of God, doesn't it? And what does that make God if you're a brother or a sister to the Son of God? It makes God your father. Steve Antonucci back there. Steve told me something this morning that I didn't know. We wondered, why is your name? What's Strelo or, you know, something like that? Did I pronounce that right? Strelo, Strelo. Strelo. Estrello. And I said, how come it's Antonucci now? He said, it's a long story. But the important part of the story, he did not know until recently who his real father was. You did not know. He lived a large part of his life not knowing the name of his real father. But now he knows who his real father is, and he knows what his real last name should have been. I'm going to tell you that there are lots of people out there that don't know who their real father is, spiritually. They don't know that they belong in the family of God. They don't know that God is our heavenly father. They don't know him, and they don't know what their real name is, sons and daughters of God. They don't know it. And it's up to us to tell them who the father is, to point them to the father. I don't know how Steve found out who his father was, but some way he was pointed to the real father. And he's taken on the Father's name. We need to take that name on too. We are sons of God. We are daughters of God. And God himself is our Father. And God is not ashamed to call us his sons and his daughters. And Christ is not ashamed to call us his brothers and his sisters. God is our Father even if you did not have a natural father during childhood. Today is a day for every child of God to give thanks. We give thanks to our natural fathers who have been examples of God, our Heavenly Father. 
fathers who have given us the example of God's love, of God's provision, of God's protection. Today we give thanks to our surrogate or adopted fathers who have been there for us, even if we didn't have a natural father in the picture, to lead us, to teach us, to mentor us, to guide us through every part of our lives where we needed somebody to look up to, somebody to show us what a man of God was like. Thank God for those people who stood in that spot, who stood in that place to give us that example of what our Heavenly Father's heart is all about. Today we also give thanks for those who have been a godly example of the Heavenly Father to our sons and daughters. You see, uh, perhaps you have a son or a daughter, but there's a man outside of your family who has been a great influence to your son or daughter. And they have been like a father. Even though you're not saying uh, um, that, they're there, that that person is your father, you can be thankful that God put that person in your child's life to be a father. Be thankful that God has put those people in our lives that change our lives. There's a few people in my life that I could say, that person, their presence in my life has changed my life. You know, there's a few. There's not many. But that person is a special person. And when that person is an example of who the Heavenly Father is, when that person shows uh, uh, the child how better to, to relate to the Heavenly Father, how to get closer to the Heavenly Father, what the Heavenly Father is like, that person that mirrors the image of the Father's love to that child, that person's an important person. And we need to thank God for those people who take on that role in our lives. The contribution that those kind of men have made in our lives is something that is truly worth our gratitude. It's worth our praise. Men, if, you're, if you are a good father, I want you to know this. If you are here today and you are a father and you're a good father, you're a good example of the Heavenly Father, then I want you to know in this area of your life, you're going to get a well done my good and faithful servant. Well done. I entrusted a child to you like baby Quinn. I've entrusted a child to you, Father. What are you going to do with what I've entrusted to you? This is a precious gift. What are you going to do with the gift I've given you? Are you going to take on the responsibility of who you should be? Well, if you have been any child, if you've been an example of the Heavenly Father to that child, I want you to know the Father says, well, my good and faithful servant. If you have not taken on the role of a father towards anyone, and you're a man, then this is the time to pledge your heart to be that person for someone. To be willing to take on that role. To find the fatherless. To find those who need some nurturing, who need some direction. There are lots of young men out there who have no role model at all. And if your only role model is a rap singer, you're going to have a problem. If your only role model is, is, is a movie star, you're going to have a problem. But these boys need a role model of a man of God. A man who serves the living God. And you can be that person. Because everybody under the sound of my voice, everybody in this place has a heavenly father that we actually, we know who our heavenly father is, don't we? There's not a man here that I, I don't believe from looking at the people that I know here. There's not a man here who has not asked Jesus into their life. There's not a man here who doesn't know the heavenly father. Well, I want you to know that you are a person that could be an example to a child that doesn't have that example. You could be an example of God to someone who doesn't know God. It is by that nurturing, by taking on that role, by taking on that responsibility, that we show forth the Father's love to the fatherless. That God places the solitude in families like our families. And we show forth the love of the Father. And today is a day to say, thank God for good fathers. Thank God for godly fathers. Thank God for men in our life who have been an example of Christ to us. Thank God for those who in the midnight hour when there was nobody to stand for us, they showed up and came to the rescue. Thank God for those that when we were down and out and nobody wanted us, there were those that said, I think you're still worth something. I love you. Thank God for those kind of people. If you have not been uh, a natural father, you still have a responsibility to be a spiritual father to somebody. And I want us to all today, all of us men, even if you have been a natural father, you still have the responsibility to be a spiritual father to others. I want all of us men today to recognize on Father's Day, let's not just say thank you to our fathers, but let's also pledge ourselves to be that person for someone else. I'd like all the men 
Everybody can bow their head with me, but I'd love all the men to pray this pledge to God with me right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are so loving and gracious and good and that you accept us into your family and that you call us sons. And Lord Jesus, every man in this place today, Lord Jesus, uh, Lord, those of us who have a willing heart, Lord, we just want to offer ourselves right now to be that person in someone's life, Lord. And Lord, if we don't have anybody to seek out a person, Lord, that we can bestow upon them the love, the direction, the admonition of the Lord, that we can show them the way, that we can be examples of men of God to those who are fatherless, Lord. Lord, we pledge ourselves to be willing to be used in that role. We pledge ourselves, Lord, to live a lifestyle that is above reproach so that those that are looking on can see what a real man of God is like. We pledge, if we have biological children, Lord, if we have not been a great example, Lord, we pledge to turn that and to say, we're going to walk, Lord, in your footsteps. We're going to show those children what it is like to be loved by the Father in heaven. We're going to be the example of godliness that we should be to our daughters, to our sons, to our adopted children, to our surrogate children, those children that we've just accepted into our, into our friendship and our family. We want to be those examples, God, that we should be. And Lord, where we lack, Lord, we say forgive us and strengthen us now. Lord. Strengthen us now, Lord. Give us your wisdom. Give us your knowledge, Lord, that we can be what you want us to be. And Lord, today all of us say this. For every person that has been in our life or is in our life right now, who has been an example of our Heavenly Father to us, for every one of those we want to say to you, Lord, who put that person in our lives, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for bringing into our lives those men who have shown us, Lord, what you are all about. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, for those of you who are fathers today, you have a great responsibility ahead of you. If you have been doing a perfect job, awesome. But if there are areas for improvement, as we all have, right, may God help you and encourage you. And may God show you how to better become that person that can be uh, an effective witness of our Heavenly Father. And we want to say for those of you who are doing that, who are taking on that role, taking on the responsibility to be a father. Give all our fathers a hand clap right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, I don't think there's anybody here that fits this description, but I could be wrong, and I have been wrong before. There. If there's anybody here today who does not know the Heavenly Father, anybody here today who does not have that relationship with God where you can call Him Father, then He wants to be your Father right now. And what better day to give your life to Him than Father's Day? If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if he is not your Lord and Savior, if you have never specifically asked him to come into your heart and to save you, then this is the time I want to offer to allow you to do that. In one minute, you can change your eternity. If you have not done that, this is the day to do it, and I would like to ask you to raise your hand right now. If you have not, if you have not. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you are such a good father to us, Lord. That, Lord, even where perhaps our earthly fathers have lacked in some areas, Lord, you've always been there for us, Lord. You've been good to us, Lord, and, Lord, you've cared for us, and you've carried us through every situation and every trial. You've brought us through every sickness and every disease and healed. You've delivered us from the hand of the adversary. You provided for us all the day we are here today because you protected us. And Heavenly Father, we want to say to you, Happy Father's Day, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget about uh, Wednesday evening services for the youth, uh, the teens. That's 7 o'clock in the portable. And for the uh, uh, preteens and the adults, 730 in the sanctuary. God bless you. Thank you for coming.